Uh, this is Reed Martin, Director of Marketing at Independent Pictures, interviewing Harmony Corrine on November 15th, 2000, at around 4.45. Why do you think some people find the film somewhat disturbing? Some people find it that. Um, why, why are some people polarized by the, by the movie? Again, I don't really have any kind of social insight or commentary to my movies. I mean, I could begin to dissect them in a kind of analytical way, but that, that's really boring for me. I'd rather just jump out a fucking window and shoot myself. So I just do what I do because, like Bresson has said, uh, that if uh, there's no image there that uh, that existed before that you'd want to see, then you create your own image. And uh, it's kind of a self-fulfilled prophecy of sorts. I don't to me, there wasn't those images, so I made them. That's the only reason. If, some, if they had existed, I would have quit or not made the movie. And and how long? You know, casting is something that seems like it's really an important aspect. How long did it take you to put the elements of the, of Gummo together in terms of finding the, just the people who were going to represent what you wanted to see on on screen? Oh, Jesus! I don't see any longer than uh, 35 minutes. No, I did it really randomly. I hired people out of. Uh, uh, factories and stuff. We, I gave myself, I gave myself uh, 45 minutes to cast the entire movie out of like Burger Kings, and uh, slaughterhouses. Did you you brought Juke joints and stuff like that? Weren't the main characters on some TV talk shows? Yeah, well, the main characters. That's different. Uh, I saw them all on different talk shows uh, about uh, ch uh, children who sniff paint and survive. Uh, or, uh, paint-sniffing survivors, which always inspired me because uh, I, I mourn a lot of the paint-sniffers who uh, don't survive, so the ones who do, I think, have an extra good constitution. I'd like to work with those people. And, you know, that, the, the image of, of uh, the bunny character coming in, it's a really, uh, it's a really stark and, and really grabs you. Where, where did that, especially the ears, I noticed, where did that first come to you, that, that image? I don't know. I just uh, it's hard for me to explain where I get the actual images from. I just wanted to see a boy with uh, rabbit ears, but he wasn't. He took on certain aspects of a rabbit, but at the same time, he was a boy, and uh, I just needed a, a boy that was a rabbit to fulfill what it was that I was trying to say. All the characters in my movie are beautiful, even the ones that I find disgusting. And I don't see any one person as being any one way. And um, I don't think things are as easy and as simple as they uh, are said or shown to be in most films. So um, for me, it wasn't hard or it wasn't complex showing the complexity of these characters of a girl with Down syndrome, showing her beauty because her beauty is obvious and, and transcendent to me and the idea of exploitation means absolutely nothing to me because uh, I, I show what I want to see and I don't exploit people, I don't make people do things that they don't want to but also it's not an argument that I care to fight or to defend. One of the things that um, really struck me is the the Daisy classic BB gun is such an icon uh -huh. of my youth. I I got a, I met a kid the first time I ever th uh, thought about suicide it was this kid who tried to overdose on four Advil, and I gave him uh, for fifty cents I bought his BB gun and uh, I ch I shot myself in the temple with it twelve times and uh, I got a terrible infection. Um, that's really what it. What for me it represents is an infection. Were there any kind of magic on the day that you remember, or something really just like struck you and you thought, oh, that, that's great? We got like maybe the uh, the one guy destroying the chair, and after the after he loses. Yeah, that would all be the last day of filming. It was the most intense, where he filmed like believe it or not, in the very last day, he filmed like two thirds of the film because I'd waited for rain and prayed for rain, and that was a day, and that was a day like we the the, the guy fought the chair, and I did my scene with. Uh, were with the dwarf and um, the the whole ending with the rabbit um, running into the camera while it was raining with the Roy Orbison music and the girls kissing the rabbit in the swimming pool and the and the bowling alley scene that was all done in a single day and after it's done I uh, pulled my pants down and threw my sister through a plate glass window and vomited in a yellow bucket and woke up a few days later and the film had been finished and. Uh, Someone had stabbed me with like a, a little red army pocket knife. Um, I think it was uh, someone from the crew who was getting back at me. But um, it was a pretty f intense day.
Did you did you just let the camera roll at some points to, to see what oh, yeah, magic definitely. you would get? Most of the time, almost all the time, I just let the camera roll. Let it ease on down and suck you off. Um, are the people behind the camera, was there anyone that uh, you specifically wanted to have? Well, Jean, Jean uses Scofie, the cinematographer, was very much my partner in this movie, uh, creatively, visually. Um, I owe a great deal to his eye, because as he was filming the movie, because he's French, uh, and he's he was definitely my first choice. He's someone who's... Uh, whose uh, images I'd always admired. He was the first person I approached, and it was great to work with him because he looked at things, because he had never been to a place like Nashville, and the place I took him, so it was all like a third world country to him. So he was looking at it where it was really familiar for, with, for me. He was looking at it with eyes of like a frog. Well, which he is a frog. <laughs> I am a strictly American filmmaker. America also, though, puts such a heavy premium on narrative. How, how important do you think that is to its stories? I mean, some people get frustrated when they don't get answers or when they don't see a beginning, a middle, and an end, or they don't have it clearly spelled out for them. I don't really believe in a, in a or I don't really care in a basic narrative. I don't see narrative in life. I see stories, and I love stories, but I don't see anything ever beginning or, or finishing, and I don't feel like there's a middle to anything in my life. So. I just rather show scenes and uh, just things that exist and uh, go on and on and on. But uh, I could care less about narrative. I think story is essential and characters are both essential. But as far as putting something in order, I think that's just a, uh, something that's been done for for the past hundred years and been accepted. And that's just not I'm not interested. Are there any aspects of humanity that should not be revealed? I mean, their their films are something. That they're absolutely films not. That, yeah, I think that. People should reveal everything and anything that they want to. I don't think there's any such thing as a ta real taboo. And if there is, I think that it should be broken right away. I wouldn't shy away from anything. I don't think there's any any way to go too far myself. I mean, there's things that people can do that go too far in a stupid and silly way just to do it for the sake of doing it. And I've got no... Uh, I'm not really concerned with that. I mean, the idea of shock for shock's sake or, you know, I mean... I'm a provocateur in, the, in a sense, but I'm not in a, you know, I don't, I don't find anything I've ever done shocking. I, I, I uh, and I don't think that I've done anything that's, that's taboo. I just think, I don't see things as taboo. I think that people think and have daydreams of all sorts of things. I mean, if you, if the idea of, of making love to a 12-year-old girl passes through your mind, does that make you, uh, a bad person because we all have these thoughts it's just that we don't necessarily act upon them so uh, I don't know that's pretty much I said too much already